people, when they look at this, they say, this can't be the, uh, based on the original coin. This is sharper. This is clearer. The detail is, is much greater and it's higher. Well, this was originally uh, as intended by St. Gaudens, and we're extremely pleased uh, with that end result. Uh, each uh, coin is one troy ounce of gold, a uh, pure 24 karat gold, so that's 0.9999, and it's 27 millimeters in diameter. So what does that mean? It's a really thick coin, and it's a very heavy uh, gold coin. As a matter of fact, if you uh, would uh, try to determine how thick it is, you could uh, lay three dimes uh, on top of each other, and it equals three dimes, and it's more than two quarters. So it's a very, very thick coin. And uh, after uh, my remarks, uh, everyone will be able to see it up close as, uh, as well as touch it. So I want to explain the exhibit behind me. Uh, in the case right behind me, you'll see uh, St. Gordon's final plaster. Uh, this was the one that he considered uh, the best uh, rendition of his work. It was digitally mapped um, uh, from the original to uh, retain its integrity and beauty. Uh, so uh, when you take a look at these plasters, this is what St. Gaudens had originally intended. Uh, we did add a few small uh, details that aren't on the original version. Uh, we added four stars to now represent all 50 states. Uh, we uh, also updated the uh, Roman numeral date from 1907 to 2009. Uh, because all legal tender coins need to be uh, made with In God We Trust, uh, and the original did not have In God We Trust. Uh, we put In God We Trust, but we uh, did it in the same place they put it in 19, uh, 1908. So feel free to touch the plasters when you come here. Uh, that's what they're here for, so you can actually feel how high this sculpture is. The, uh, the next case uh, on this side, uh, demonstrates the uh, painstaking testing it took to get uh, the coin to where it was, uh, to, to where it is today. It includes a set of feasibility uh, dies, the final design dies, and the edge lettering collars uh, that make the raised lettering around the edge of the coin. The feasibility dies were used to test the hardness of the blanks and the metal flow, so when the uh, dies hit, how will the metal spread? Uh, which is particularly important on an ultra-high relief coin. After uh, the test dies of the actual design were created, progression strikes were made, meaning we tested it using 10 uh, tons uh, behind our strike, then 20, then 30, then 40, 50, and 60, until we found the right amount of tonnage to bring out uh, the relief the way it was supposed to uh, be. And then in the third case over here, you'll see the finished coins. We've also set up a display here, so uh, afterwards um, you can uh, get a photograph uh, by the coins uh, if you wanted a little uh, keepsake of your time here. Uh, so far, uh, we uh, have uh, got enough gold blanks to have made 29,000 of these coins, but uh, 43,000 people uh, have ordered them uh, in the first eight days. So we think that this is going to be a very popular coin, and we really take a look at this. Uh, this is a high-quality work of art. It's uh, the, uh, arguably the best coin ever made in America and arguably one of the best coins ever made in the world throughout all of history. So this is really a bargain uh, given uh, the price of a Monet may be uh, $35 million, but you can buy the best coin ever made uh, for the price of gold plus our manufacturing costs, which right now the price of gold is around $900 and uh, uh, the uh, current selling price is around $1,250. So uh, with that, uh, this is a steal in today's uh, tough economy that you can get a great work of art uh, for, uh, for about uh, $1,200. Uh, this, uh, this coin also is important to the Mint because it, is, uh, it was created with the se uh, same sense of purpose and enthusiasm that Teddy Roosevelt uh, had when he was trying to redesign American coinage. That was the type of uh, support and enthusiasm that we got from the employees here at the United States Mint. They knew that this was going to be uh, the pinnacle of coin making and uh, their efforts and talent and um, uh, uh, passion went into the development of this coin and my hope is we will be able to continue that momentum as you see new coins uh, come out of the United States Mint. So none of this would have been possible without the engraving staff here at the United States Mint in Philadelphia and along with that I have uh, just a small announcement that I would like to uh, make and that is uh, we have a change in job title today and I'd like to ask John Mercante. John Mercante. 
Where's John? Come on up. Let me read this. It is with pleasure that I change your title to Chief Engraver. All right. The senior medallic artist of the United States Mint has consistently inspired excellence in America's coins and medals. From Robert Scott, the first chief engraver who began with the inception of the United States Mint in 1793, to Elizabeth Jones in the late 1980s, chief engravers have made a significant influence on our nation's coinage. Important milestones of designs have been many and have included Thomas Jefferson's Indian Peace Medals, Seated Liberty Designs, the Indian Head Scent, the Barber Dime, uh, the Barber Quarter and Barber Half Dollar, the Morgan Dollar, the Roosevelt Dime, the Franklin Half Dollar, the Kennedy Half Dollar, and the Lincoln Memorial Reverse on the Lincoln Scent. As you know, we are engaged in creating a new renaissance of American coinage and medals, and I have the utmost confidence in your abilities and capacity to lead the United States Mint sculptors and engravers to ever-increasing heights in, des in design which embody the highest degree of artistic excellence. It is incumbent upon us to create the next generation of coins and medals and making the American people proud. Our future coins and medals will be uniquely American, exemplify the era of creation, they'll tell a great story, they'll advance the craft of coin and metal design, and they'll be aesthetically beautiful. Our team of artisans within the engraving and the design division do honorable work every day, and I want you to know, uh, I want you to know uh, that we are the first to recognize that each of your team members for the innumerable contributions uh, to the United States Mint. I also know that you and your team will continue to uphold the highest traditions of the United States Mint as we continue our quest for excellence. Carry on, Chief Engraver McConty. So now it's time to cut the ribbon. On behalf of all the dedicated employees of the United States Mint, both past and present, I proudly declare the 2009 Ultra, Re Ultra High Relief Double Eagle Gold Coin Exhibit now open to the public. So I invite everyone living in and visiting Philadelphia uh, to view these three exhibits which will be on display here at the Philadelphia Mint through the whole spring. Thank you for all for coming.